So three months ago, I was walking to the store with my daughter. And she looked up at me with a very matter-of-fact face and said, Dad, you just need to be honest. Because I hadn't been honest. Not to my wife, not to my daughter, not to my family and friends, not to my doctor, and probably not even to myself. For I have bipolar disorder, which is a mental disorder which has no cure. It's a disorder which affects 15% of people with disorders, and very sadly, 15% of those with bipolar end up taking their own life. Even more sadly, 90% of relationships with people with bipolar end in failure. I had not been honest to my family, my doctor, and others about my symptoms, and they're getting worse. And in August of this year, my family was close to ruin. According to the World Health Organization, at least one in eight people around the world suffer some, from some form of mental health disorder. That's more than corona. This is the challenge of pandemic proportions. But still, it is an illness in silence, in secrecy. So today, I wanted to talk with honesty. Because I think honesty is the best policy and the best medicine. First, as a semi-successful businessman, I want to reassure you that there is a life with bipolar. And secondly, as a very concerned but also proud parent, pass on to the group today why I think it's very, very important to think about. So my challenge with bipolar began in 2010. In fact, it might go back further, but my first big depression was in 2010. And this was bad. This was couldn't get out of bed bad. This was in 2010 when you Googled suicide on Google. It told you how, not where to go to find help. I actually worked at Google, which is a happy place. But my mind was not working. The one good thing, though, being Google, was the massage chair. And the massage chair was my sanctuary. I would spend hours in that massage chair trying to sleep it off, trying to get better. I had a good human resources business partner who came to me one day and said, David, we have to talk. And we did. He realized that with my symptoms, my unexplained absences, my inability to concentrate, plus many, many hours in the massage chair, that I needed something done. And so within days, he had me on my first mental health leave of absence from Google. My boss at the time was an ex-US uh, Navy fighter pilot who was as cool as Maverick and surprisingly also named Tom. And he said, you know, David, if you're grounded, you're grounded. And so I ended up spending uh, three months actually on leave. In those three months, I was able to sleep, get exercise, and think through my life to try and get better. And was able to get back to Google and to a world that became what we call today a psychologically safe environment, where I could talk about my challenges with my boss, with my uh, colleagues, and with my team. Fast forward to 2010 and the pandemic, I had changed jobs, this time to Discovery. Again, a great company, but that idea of psychological safety was not yet there. 
I didn't yet trust my boss, my colleagues, my HR. And so in 2020, when the pandemic hit, and as a leader, I had to take on some new and very painful decisions, again, I was hit by depression and ended up taking off one or two months uh, again at that period. At that period, I was a leader of 60 people. And in retrospect, I wished I had created a, a zone of psychological safety for myself, but the company as well, so that we could have talked more about my situation. We hadn't done that yet, and so I think I hurt the team more at that point. But again, I came back and rebounded and thought I was okay. And so what about today? What about now? And what about my daughter saying two or three months ago, just be honest? So bipolar disorder has mania, which are very uh, highs, periods of high, and periods of depression, where things are just not quite working for you. They also have this period called hypomania, where you kind of cycle through highs and lows and highs and lows, and it feels good. But hypomania is the period where you're most dangerous to yourself and to others. And that's the pe period which I've not been honest to my family, friends, or doctor about. With hypomania, you end up spending too much money. You take too many risks. And it's the most damaging time for a relationship. So moving off of where I am today and remind myself of my daughter's words, she left me with the words, just be honest. And that's the key message for today for you. Being honest as a group. So first of all, let me share more about mental health disorders uh, with you all to, to, to take away as ideas. The World Health Organization, as I said a little bit earlier, says that there's 970 million cases of mental health disorders around the world. That's almost one in eight people, or almost a billion people. That's actually bigger than the number of people who have suffered from corona over these past three years. So as I said, this actually is something of pandemic proportions for us to think about, be open about, and try and discuss as a group. Secondly, and what's most worrying to me as a father, 15% of teens and a similar number of people in their 20s are also suffering from some form of mental health disorder. Each country has a different profile for mental health and each illness has a different profile as well. For example, in my case, bipolar disorder is 5% of disorders of the US, but only 0.5% in Japan. But what's common among them is no matter which country and which disorder you might have, your life expectancy is about 10 to 20 percent, 10 to 20 years younger than if you didn't have one of these disorders. And still suicide, oftentimes driven by mental health, accounts for one in 100 deaths worldwide. So that all sucks. That's a lot of bad news. So what do we do about it? So I want to go back to a couple of words that I used earlier on in the presentation. The first is psychological safety. So I've been able to survive and I'd say thrive in my career, first of all, by finding companies and workplaces where there is some form of psychological safety. My boss, HR, my colleagues, my team, understand through open conversation what we're doing. I haven't always done that for others, but today my ask of you is to do the same. Next, think about how to cope with bipolar disorder or other disorders and help others do it. So I have a five point star, so to speak, of medicine, sleep, routine, exercise and mindfulness. And each of these are all important 
to try and balance and maintain and manage mental health. Medicine is very important to start with by making sure you have the right medicine and therefore an open conversation with your doctor to make sure he prescribes the right medicine, medicine is very important. But sleep and routine. And for me recently, I've just really started experimenting with mindfulness, a bit of meditation and things like that to make sure I can help reset my mind. But they're all anchored under the theme of honesty. So I need honesty with my family, my friends, my wife, my daughter, my workmates, so they know that when I need my sleep, I need my sleep. And then when I need my exercise, I need my exercise. And without that honesty around the table, it's very hard to manage in the way I, I need to manage. So going back to wrap it up, to the one word that my daughter reminded me of was honesty. You need to be honest, Dad. I was so taken by an eight-year-old daughter, very matter-of-fact, saying, you have to be honest. Look at what it's doing to your mother, or to my mother, and to you, my father. And how do we become much better as a family because of that? And I ask you all the same thing that in order to really take away the stigma of mental disorders, as well as to have open dialogues, think about honesty as the best policy. It will help remove the stigma of these issues, but it will also help save lives. It might save your family's life, maybe your friends, maybe even your life, and my daughter is trying to help save my life.